Give him all the praise and honor. Give him all the glory. Open your mouth and bless the Lord. That we give you praise. That we give you praise. That we give you praise. That we worship you. We bless you, King of Glory. We bless you, mighty God. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. If he has been good to you, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We give you praise and glory. 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 Somebody worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Focus and worship the Lord. Glorify the name of Jesus. He is a faithful God. Wherever you are joining us from, open your mouth and bless the name of our Lord Jesus. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. To our online family, just bless the name of Jesus. Just give God all the glory. 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 Give God all the praise. Give God all the praise. Father, we exhort you. Father, we exhort you. Father, we exhort you. We magnify your name. No one is like you. 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 No one is like you, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, we love you. No one is like you, Jesus. No one is like you, Jesus. No one is like you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. Let your voice be heard. Let your worship reach him. Let your praise touch his heart. Let it be from your heart to his heart. You 
Jesus we love you Jesus we love you Jesus we love you Jesus this far you are Ebenezer this far you are Ebenezer Said about our, our nation Kenya. But today, in the name of Jesus, any judgment against this nation, any judgment against this nation, it can never happen. There are friends of God in this nation. Kenya as friends of God Kenya as remnants Abraham as him if you find 50 will you destroy and I know one thing if there is one righteous man in Kenya God can never destroy Kenya God can never be hungry with Kenya. God can never punish Kenya. And therefore we speak mercy over this nation. We speak mercy over this nation. We speak God's mercy over this nation. The sure mercies of God in our nation, Kenya. The sure mercies of God. The sure masses of God of our beloved nation. And I declare this when they say death, when they say judgment, we say revival. When they say death, 
when they say judgment we shout revival who is with me we declare revival Revival. There is a lot of destruction. There is a lot of destruction taking place. Can I say this? What you are hearing is not the reality. I will repeat again. What men are saying. <laughs> What they are saying about Kenya is not the truth. This is the truth about this nation. Revival. I say revival. And I see the cloud of revival over the nation of Kenya. And we speak revival. When they are busy speaking death, we speak revival. I say revival over the nation of Kenya. Revival. I don't care who says what. I say revival. I said revival. Not what they are saying. Not what they are saying. It's revival. I say it's revival it's revival it's revival I say revival and if there's anyone who has to die in Kenya for us to have revival then they will go after all King Uzziah died and I don't mean the president King Uzziah died for Isaiah to see the Lord. Are you with me? You are not with me. As the king Uzziah died. If there is any death. It is because. There is a revival coming. <laughs> if there is going to be any death. It is because of revival. After all. After all. Before Pharaoh. Before Pharaoh said, Moses, now you can go. There was death. If there is death, it's because of revival. Ah, you are not with me. If there is any death anywhere to anybody, it's because revival must come. So if anyone has to go, it's because of revival. I said it. And so shall it be. It's good to clear the air. And make things straight. If there is any death. It's because revival is coming. And the revival cannot be stopped. And the devil is agitated because he knows his time is over. I spoke the mind of God. Philippians chapter 2. going to destroy Zion. You didn't hear what I said. To destroy Kenya in your dreams. I said in your dreams Kenya can never be destroyed. 
Ah, man of God, you don't speak like they speak. I am not them. I am me. By the grace of God. I am Titi Eagles. By the grace of God. We don't say as they say. Kenya can never be destroyed. Because God has a date with this nation. No one, not even the devil himself, can destroy Kenya. No one. Never be lied to. Don't be moved by fear. I'm telling you. Man of God, what about the floods? Uh -uh. No one said God was punishing Dubai. Did you see floods in Dubai? You didn't see floods in Dubai and other nations of the world? Was God also punishing them? No one has ever said, rose and said, I am a prophet of God and God is punishing Dubai for their sins. Are you here? Is Dubai not the place where they take their girlfriends and they leave their wives here? Give us a break. Eh? Tell prophets to give us a break. Kenya is blessed. Kenya is not cursed. As a Kenya, we cannot curse our nation now. How do we open our mouth and curse our nation? Uh, every day we are in terror. Next week, there is going to be this. I saw darkness over Kenya. Ah! When will you see light? Me, I'm seeing light. Where will you take me? Who else is seeing light like me? Me, I'm seeing revival. You keep on cursing our nation. Some people are in Kenya. When Kenya is destroyed, even you, you are destroyed. How dare you? Prophet, prophet. Ah, prophet, my foot. Are you here? Ah, ah. We must bless our nation. We must bless our leaders. We must have a culture of blessing our leaders. Whoever God has put there is the one that God ordained to be there. Wait for next time. And whoever wins next time, we shall also bless them. Whether they raise a Quran or Bible, we shall still bless them because leadership comes from God. But we can't, we can't breathe in Kenya because apparently there are prophets here and there saying, hey, I, I was sleeping. The Lord woke me up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Ah, it's your grandmother that woke you up. Are you here? It's your dead grandmother woke you up, not Jesus. To tell you there is doom in Kenya. There is no doom in Kenya. Revival is coming and the time has come. No one is saying about revival. What they are saying is darkness. Dark cloud. Dark cloud. Death. Flag halfway. Ah. If there is anybody that is going to die, it is because revival must come. It is because they have been standing on the way of revival. Final. Kenya is blessed. God is not judging Kenya. God is not. How can God judge the one he loves? How can God punish the nation that he loves? How? Talk to me. How? You think God is a killer? He is in heaven planning on You think God needs floods to kill you? Are you here? You think God needs floods to kill, to kill you guys? You think God is so weak that he needs floods to kill you? Ah. You don't know God. God doesn't have to, to have floods to take your life. He can take you right now while you are seated. God doesn't need floods to kill you. Stop portraying another God that is so hungry. I, hey. Some are saying, I saw the face of God and God was mad in this nation. God is not mad with Kenya. God is pleased with Kenya. There are remnants. There are remnants of preachers. There are remnants of men of God. Elijah was taught, I have 7,000. Them that think there are no remnants. There are remnants in Kenya. There are righteous men in Kenya. 
I say it again. There are righteous men in Kenya and they are not one and they are not 50 and they are not 1,000 and they are not 10,000. Only that you don't know them and they are not on TV. They are not popular. Ah, uh, Let's wait and see. This is my nation. Let's wait and see. This one. This Kenya. God can never let Kenya go. Mark my words. Write it somewhere. Mark the date of today. God can never let Kenya go. Forget them. Don't be moved. I saw the death of a politician. Ah, people die every day. Are you moved? Go to the mortuary right now. Somebody is being, some, as I'm talking to you right now, somebody is being ferried to the mock right now. Is God hungry with Kenya? Or when one big person dies, God is hungry with Kenya? Hey, think now. Are you here? Somebody just knock, has just been knocked on Mombasa Road. Now God is angry with Kenya. People are dying everywhere. And people have always been dying. Even Abraham died. Even Jesus died. Are you here? Please, take it easy. Be at peace. Don't be distracted. Those are voices of destruction. God has Kenya in his hands like this. And he can never let Kenya go. I'm wondering, even the people, the preachers that are prophesying, I see doom over Kenya. They are busy selling oil and water. Stop selling oil first. We listen to you. Ah, you are busy selling oil, selling water, selling handkerchief. And then you come here and say, God is hungry. Which God? That God you saw is not the true God. If you hear God, he should have told you to stop selling water. Forget about it. They are just charlatans making noise everywhere. God loves Kenya. God loves Kenya. And I cover Kenya with the blood of Jesus. I declare Kenya is covered with the blood of Jesus. When they speak, we speak. It's done. Forget about it. Just a wave of charlatans passing. They just want to be relevant in the meantime. Yeah. Joseph. Ye. Aye. Yeah. Somebody has three women around and then they are coming on altar saying, God is hungry with Kenya. He should be hungry with you first. When he came before rebuking Kenya, he should have rebuked you. To stop selling water in our land. You are part of the curse. You're telling us now. Are you here? Yes. So I, I, I heard from God. They didn't hear from God. They heard from God. And as far as I'm, as far as I know, miungu ya shera imesha anguka. Miungu ya shera iko down. Sasa wana jaribu kujitetana lakini wako chini. Sema wako chini. Ah. You think God works with hands that are soiled? Which one? Which God? Which one? Which one are we talking about by the way? We begin to sell water here and oil and and and, and mangoes. And then we say God appeared to me. He's not God, he's your grandmother. The one that died. So give us a break. Kenya is blessed. Somebody say Kenya is blessed. So if you are moved by those prophets, go and delete them. If you've been forwarding them on WhatsApp, telling people God is uh, angry with Kenya. God is not angry with Kenya. God loves Kenya. Somebody say God loves Kenya. Say God loves Kenya. Ah, is it about Kenya? Kenya is the most wicked country, eh? Abi. Eh? Ah, God is not angry with another nation. Let me ask you now. Answer me. 
It's only our nation. These guys, uh -uh, they will not speak doom of our nation. Kenya is ours. And if there is doom in Kenya, it will affect us. So when they are speaking, they are cursing our nation. Let's bless our nation. Some guys are just bitter. They are just bitter. They just want to see uh, Kenya punish so that they can have a point to say, hey, you fought me. That's why things are not working in Kenya. Ah, forget about them. Forget about them. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. You know, Jesus found them selling and buying. He made a whip. Whip them out of the church. Out of the house of God. They are busy selling, buying. And you are the ones that you are listening. And you are forwarding on WhatsApp. And uh, TikTok. God is hungry with Kenya. I saw a politician die. And then after that they sell water to you. Ah, no. Hallelujah. Do you get what I'm saying? They just provoked me in the spirit. I didn't plan to say that. I didn't plan to say that. Where do you watch Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Are you there? Others, John. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. We've been speaking on the three keys to manifesting greatness. And these main keys to manifest greatness, we said it's number one is humility. Number two, it's obedience. And number three is faithfulness. I am still on humility. I am still on humility. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Bible says, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore God also as highly exhorted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Father bless the reading of your word now let me underscore the following that Jesus carried greatness But he had humility. Jesus carried greatness. The book of Philippians shows us that he humbled himself. He was a son. The son of God. He was God. He had power to do anything. And to overturn anything. But he had humility. He was humble. Despite him being God. And having everything at his disposal. He was humble. And we are seeing in the scriptures. He was humble. He carried greatness. But he was humble. They that came to arrest him at Gethsemane, you remember, there's something he told them. He said, you don't know. I can ask my father right now to send his angels and he will send them. Twelve legions of angels. Oh, in the book of Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 26. They were coming to arrest him. And he says, Ah, 
I have one who can fight my battle. He, te he tells Peter, put your knife back to yourself. I, my father can bring legions of angels right now to me to fight this battle for me. But you know what? He was humble enough to allow the will of God prevail. Matthew 26 verse 53 the Bible says or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels how then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus Jesus was so humble to the father and he was allowed to manifest greatness. He had everything at his disposal. He is God. But he allowed things to happen. As the scriptures say, he carried humility. He was humble. That is why Greatness manifested in him because he was humble. He humbled himself to the death of cross. He died on a tree. He was hanged on a tree. Only criminals died by hanging in that time. He humbled himself to die the death of the cross. To die the death of a criminal. And he kept quiet. When they asked him questions, he kept quiet. When they insulted him, he kept quiet. He was humble. At that moment, he would have said, Fire! And all of them would be down, dead. But he was so humble to permit the will of God prevail. Humility. Humility is one of the keys that you need to manifest the greatness of God. Jesus, because of being humble, he manifested the greatness of God everywhere he went. It is only in humility that greatness can manifest. It's only in humility that greatness can manifest you will be allowed by heaven to manifest greatness I saw a young man disputing about greatness you should understand what is greatness according to the Bible first greatness is not fame we don't define greatness as the world defines greatness when Jesus spoke about greatness he spoke about being a servant if anyone wants to be great among you, he must become a servant. He said, the son of man never came to be served, but to serve. That is greatness. The definition of greatness in the kingdom is not the same as greatness in the world. So if you interpret greatness with the words of dictionary, you miss, you miss on the whole point. Greatness is in doing the will of the Father. Greatness is in doing what God ordained you to do. For his glory and for his honor. Not for your own glory. It's only in humility that greatness is manifested. Every child of God needs to be humble. Everyone that God has chosen and ordained to do his will you need humility it's one of the keys that God checks one of the main keys that God comes and checks for you to be allowed to manifest greatness you can never be allowed by heaven to manifest greatness without humility when you are proud are you not aware that God resists the proud 
God can never allow you to manifest greatness when you're proud. Pride destroys. Pride brings you down. Pride crushes you. Pride makes you an enemy of God. The moment he sees pride and you are so persistent, you are not turning around to humility, it begins to oppose you. That was the fate of Lucifer. When iniquity in the form of pride was found in his heart, God opposed him and brought him here down. That is what pride does. It brings you down. This greatness is huge. But it can only work in those hearts that have humility. It can only work in you if you are humble before God. Listen, pride is not a spirit from God. And God can never plant pride in your heart. What God plants is humility. So pride is not from God. It is not a spirit from God. God can never plant pride in a man. What he plants is humility. God can never plant pride in you. No, he can never. You cannot have pride in you. You cannot have pride in you and expect to manifest greatness. You have to be humble. You need to remove pride in you and put on humility. Bible says, clothe yourself with humility. Clothe yourself with humility. Clothe yourself with humility. Remove pride and put on humility. God is not pleased with pride. Let pride go. Listen, I've been speaking about Joseph, about Esther, about Daniel. For God to leave Joseph, he was humble. I taught about Joseph when he came before Pharaoh and Pharaoh praises him and tells him, I have been told that, ah, you are very excellent in the interpretation of dreams. And Joseph says, it is not in me, but God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Humility has a language. Don't allow them to praise you. A commitment to the, le to the word I is the beginning of your destruction. I can see. I can preach well. I can prophesy. Are you here? Eh? Let it always be by the grace of God. Are you here? Joseph, he was the one interpreting dreams, but he tells Pharaoh, it is not in me. But God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. In other words, he gives glory to God. The same Joseph, when he just had a dream of greatness, he came, sat his elder brothers, his elder brothers and his father said, ah, guys, sit down. I had this dream. <laughs> you are all going to worship me. Hey, that was then. But over time, he has gone through training. God has prepared him. Now there's no pride in him. Now he is a humble man. When he stands before Pharaoh, he knows what to say. He knows how to speak. He knows, he knows what should come out of his mouth. 
and what should not come out of his mouth? Humility. The Lord told me, son, tell them not to go about bragging, saying, I pray for five hours. It should be by the grace of God. I, I pray for five hours. I pray. I, commitment to that word I, it will bring trouble between you and God. I'm just telling you. So for God to lift Joseph up, he was humble. For God to lift Esther up, she was humble. You remember Vashti. She was removed from her position because of pride. She was not humble. When the king needed her attention, she said, I have a conference of women. I have a meeting with women. And Mr. King, I can't come. That was pride. And she was removed. And another one took her place. And for God to lift Esther, she was humble. She was humble. For God to lift Daniel up. He was humble. That's, that is why Daniel is teaching Nebuchadnezzar about humility. Say, say, sir, your excellency, beware of pride. And after warning him 12 months later, Nebuchadnezzar eats grass. Because he never eat dead to the advice of Daniel. Daniel had known. Daniel knew that when you are pride, when you are proud, you can never be used of God. You can never manifest greatness. Daniel knew. He's advising Nebuchadnezzar. For God to lift Daniel, Daniel was humble. For you to manifest greatness, you must be humble. You must be humble. Even for Jesus, for the Father to lift him up, he was humble. You have to humble yourself. You need to humble yourself for the lifting to happen and for the manifestation of greatness. What does the Bible say in the book of First Peter chapter 5 verse 6? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due season he will lift you up. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. There is always the appointed time. There is always the due season that is in the hands of God. Not in your feelings. Not in men. Not in your friends. Lifting is always in the hands of God. Bow your head before the Lord and tell him, Daddy, search my heart. If there be any pride, any trace of pride, Daddy, deliver me from pride. Search my heart, O oh God. Search my heart, O oh God. And deliver me from pride. Search my heart, O oh God. Glorify, you are worthy. 
You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Jesus. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Jesus. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh. May God deliver you from pride. May God rescue you from the demon of pride. And may he clothe you with humility. I say may he clothe you with humility. May he clothe you with humility. Be clothed with humility. Be clothed. Clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. Pride is not your portion. I say, Pride is not your portion. Pride is not your portion. It is not your portion. May God deliver you from the demon of pride and may He clothe you with humility. May He clothe you with humility. May He clothe you with humility. Be standing and stretch your hands here. I bless you. I speak the blessing of God upon you. I speak the blessing of God upon your life. I speak the blessing of God upon your life. Come on, I speak the blessing of God in your life. I speak the blessing of God upon you. In the name of Jesus. And I declare every arrow directed in your life I declare it null and void. Every demonic arrow projected against your life, against your health, against your finances, against your children, against the work of your hands, I declare it null and void. I bless your weak. I bless your weak. In the name of Jesus, I bless your weak. I bless your weak. Your weak is blessed of God. Every evil arrow projected against our nation, I declare it null and void. I declare it null and void. I declare it powerless. In the name of Jesus. 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 God bless Kenya. We 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 bless Kenya. Kenya is blessed. Kenya is blessed. We declare our schools open. Our schools open. Them that are traveling long distance, short distance, by air, by road, by rain, by water, I declare safety. I declare journey masses. I declare the grace of God is upon you. And to every parent that you're trusting God for finances to take your children back to school, may there be provision for you. I speak divine provision for you. May God come through for you. May God come through for you. May God come through for you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. You are blessed and favored of God. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. If you are not born again. What are you waiting for? 
give your life to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. Say after me. Say Jesus. Come into my life. Be my Lord. And Savior. I believe. That the Father raised you from the dead. I confess with my mouth. That you are Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. You are born again. You are saved. Don't stay at home. Look for a Bible believing church around where you are. Look for a Bible believing church around where you are. There are remnants of churches, remnants of men of God in every locality, in every city, in every nation. Let the Spirit of God lead you to the right place where Christ is revealed. If you happen to be in Nairobi and his environs, can I invite you to this church? We are Eco's Dominion House International here in the heart of Nairobi, in Nairobi City Center, in Sunbeam Shopping Complex. That's where we are. Sunbeam Shopping Complex, fifth floor. Sunbeam is opposite Equity Bank or Nat Headquarters and is along Mfangano Street. There's also a number down on the screen. You can call that number. Take that number, call me. What's up, me, dear me, speak to me. I'll pray with you. I'll speak into your life. God bless you. God favor you. I love you. Shalom. Shalom.